Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Countdown to Two A Day series, our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we're going to be answering about that team in our August 17th preseason football preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm with my partner, Dan Youngblood. And tonight, Dan, we got an interesting ball club to talk about the early Longhorns. Yeah, I think that's a really good word for this group. I think it's a very interesting bunch. Uh, this is a team that really had a breakthrough season last year, going nine and three. Uh, and, and brings back a pretty good nucleus from that team. 18 total lettermen back, including seven offensive and six defensive starters. Uh, and they have some questions. Uh, they lost a, a really good running back and linebacker in Trey Beam, who has uh, rushed for almost 1,500 yards for him last year. So they're going to be a little bit different, but they got a lot back at the, at the skill positions in terms of receivers, several really good receivers back. They've got one of the most experienced quarterbacks in the big country back in Jackson Price. I think they're going to be a fun team to watch. I think they could change their style a little bit. You may see them fling the ball a little around a little bit more than they did last year, even though they threw for 2,000 yards as well last year. But I think they could uh, they, they could be more of a passing team this year just given the personnel they have back. But it's going to be fun to watch with them uh, dropping down to Class 3 AD D2. Uh, I think this will be a fun team. In terms of uh, overall depth and quickness, they may have the the best overall set of receivers, uh, really, of any of the the smaller schools in the area they they're loaded mm -hmm. with receivers and when i you know we're talking about guys that are four seven or quicker so at the i mean at the 3a level they're going to be they're going to be lining up with guys that are four six four six four seven all over the field and if they execute they're going to be they're going to be dangerous uh you could see a big play potential here uh, especially with jackson price coming back uh as the delivery system that's uh they're going to be dangerous they're not the biggest cats on the block they don't uh they don't have the biggest offensive line uh, around. So red zone performance is going to be a big key uh, for these guys. When it's third and two, they're going to have to find a way to get those two yards. Yeah, and I think that's probably one of the biggest questions is can this this early team run the ball when they need to run the ball? Because you mentioned the receivers. You talk about guys like John Stewart Gordon. He, he caught uh, over 40 passes for almost 700 yards last year, nine touchdowns. Jeremy Brown had over 700 yards receiving, five touchdowns. Uh, uh, Caleb McCullough was another one that, that they got a little playing time at the receiver position. They've got really four or five guys back. Kai Houston was a, a, a kind of breakout guy as a sophomore last year. Four or five receivers that got experience last year that are really talented kids. They're going to be really good, strong weapons in that passing game. For, for Jackson Price, but the big thing is, is what's that running game going to look like? And then that, that is, I think, probably the biggest question mark when you look at this early team. Caleb Ozuna is back after rushing for 174 yards and three touchdowns, but uh, it, Trey Beam was a, a huge, I mean, he was basically their running game last year, so they're going to have to kind of find a way to, to, to get those yards on the ground. One thing that I'm wondering is if maybe we won't see Jackson Price uh, as more of a runner this year. He, he was a, a kind of a running threat as a sophomore in his first year as starter. Last year had some injuries and some issues, and really with Trey Beam, they didn't need him to run a bunch, so he really didn't run the ball much. I wonder if this year we might see him use his legs a little bit more, but that is the question. If, if they can get yards, tough yards on the ground when they need him, this offense could be really explosive. You know, with their ability to uh, spread the field with speed all over the place and a quick delivery system, they're going to be able to score points uh, even without a consistent running game. That, uh, but sooner or later, when they, they, they face that team down the road that can maybe tackle them in space, it's going to be important to be able to find some yards on the ground, no doubt about it. Um, but secondly, if, if I have a worry for, for early as far as the size, it would come on the defensive side. Uh, if you, uh, because they're going to be going up against, uh, you know, say a, a team like Wall, uh, the Grape Creeks uh, that, that, that run the football quite a bit, Brady. Yeah, Brady. Uh, it's, you know, Brady's are definitely another one. Um, these are teams that are going to try to line up and knock you on your rear. And early is not the biggest team, so uh, they're going to have to find ways to 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 stop uh, uh, the opposing running games, create second and longs. They just have to get creative. Yeah, and you mentioned that schedule. We'll take a quick look at it, starting with the non-district. Uh, they open with a game at Bangs. Follow that with a home game against a good Toller squad. Go to Comanche bring Troy to town on September 16th and then close out their non-district schedule with a, with a, a 4A against Burnett at home. So a pretty solid non-district slate. I think it will uh, will challenge them pretty well and, and, and prepare them pretty well for district. That's an interesting non-district slate. And that, uh, that game against Troy on the 16th represents the return to the big country of former Comanche coach Stephen Hermsmeyer, who is now the head coach at Troy. But that is an interesting and challenging non-district slate for early. Uh, as you're winning the success ladder, those non-district slates are going to get tougher and tougher. Uh, District-wise, they open at Ballinger. This is a, a tough way to go. Their first two games right off the bat are at 
Ballinger and at Brady. Those are going to be a, a couple of important ball games for them if they want to get a higher playoff seed. Then their home uh, district opener will be against Great Creek. Uh, and that's an underrated Great Creek team, by the way, on the 21st. And then another road date at Wall before finishing off the regular season against TLCA. District wise, I do not like the way uh, the schedule lines up for early because all the, I mean, the most crucial games on their slate are all on the road. Yeah, and that will be the biggest challenge for him because you, you mentioned uh, to me, particularly that Brady game and the wall game. Those to me are going to be the, the biggest challenges on their on their schedule uh, for some of the reasons we mentioned, because of, uh, just personnel wise, Brady and Wall are both going to be teams. They're going to try to line it up and, and run it down your throat. And early is a little bit smaller this year. And uh, both those games will be played on the road. So I think those are going to be big. But I do think that early, uh, I mean, just looking at what all these teams have back, it's going to be hard to make a case, in my opinion, that, that any team has more uh, offensive, you know, explosiveness than this early team does. So I think this early team is, will definitely be in the mix there at the top of this district. Uh, this, this, I think, it, it's kind of a top-heavy district a little bit, but I think it's going to be a fun one. I think that, that, that race at the top, particularly between early and wall, who were former district mates at the 3A D1 level, and then Brady, I think, is is the best candidate of those others to kind of jump into that mix. But it's going to be a fun race, I think. All three of those road dates uh, are fun games. The mm-hmm. The game at Ballinger is going to be an interesting one. The game at Brady is going to be a, a, a big ball game for mm-hmm. them. And then Wall might be the game of the year for the early Longhorns. That game at Wall uh, shapes up as uh, right now, at least uh, on paper, as a near toss-up. And that could be for the district title right there. And that will be on October 28th. Yeah, and obviously it was such a big deal last year for early to to beat Wall uh, at home. And that so you know that's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, fuel uh, on on the Wall side for that one. That could that could shape up like you said to be a really big game. That could uh, uh, ultimately decide the the district championship. But uh, a fun schedule and a fun team. I think this early squad is going to be a fun one to follow all year just because of uh, some of the things we've talked about. And that's just about going to wrap things up for the countdown to two a day series tonight's episode the early Longhorns. But before we wrap things up, we want to remind you that we've got three separate subscription packages here at Big Country Press. We've got a monthly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi-annual six-month subscription where you knock that price down to four bucks a month. And then we got an annual 12-month subscription where we knock that price down to three bucks a month. 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you one more time to be on the lookout for that August 17th preseason football preview. We will just have a ton of area content. You will not want to miss that. In the meantime, thank you for joining us for this episode of our Countdown to Two a Day series. And make sure you join us again tomorrow when we will be talking about the Wallhawks here at BigCountryPreps.com.